the camera. bad peoples hold up one second sorry about that <laughs> we'll get the live feedback there anyways man uh go ahead hit the camera we're good anyways uh hey man sorry for the delay uh we'll blame it on the weather right yeah. we'll blame it on the weather <laughs> Uh, just wanted to thank you guys for tapping in on this sunday evening man i uh, appreciate you guys tuning in uh, for all the support. Before I forget, man, I want to give Brandon Foster a shout out, man. You've been on there since uh, day one, man. Thank you. I I don't see the the comments until later on after the live, but I know you're there. I know you're like wait waiting for like ten minutes before we go on all the way from Arkansas. I believe what time is it? Six, seven, eight. It's like nine, nine o'clock over there. Eight o'clock. So appreciate you, Brandon. Uh, keep tapping in, man. Appreciate the support, brother. Uh, so tonight I'm gonna jump right into it, man. I ain't gonna waste no time. I don't want to waste his brother's time uh during the last couple of weeks uh we've been having some tremendous guests you know we've been having some moms some sisters uh we had a father we had a daughter uh today though i have a, a special guest with me man that uh we go back i can't believe man when i started thinking about <laughs> it Pete, almost 30 years hey. i think it's like 31 years to be exact it's like another life yeah 31 years man we've been alive i mean we We've been knowing each other longer than some people watching right now. Yeah, right. But, um, you know, this brother right here, man, like I said, we go back almost 31 years um, during our younger days when, um, you know, times were might have been a little bit simpler, but a little bit crazier at the same time. You know, when I say simpler is that, you know, we didn't have a bunch of kids running around. We didn't have all these bills. We didn't have all these expenses and whatnot. But we do uh I know Enrique already <laughs> tapping in. I see you, Enrique, calling us some old guys. Yeah. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into Jaime. I'm going to call him Jaime. Some of you know him by Pete. Yeah. Some of you know him by Lazy. Yeah. And some of you that recently got on his boat, you know him by Mr. Untouchable. Right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right Let's into your it. story, Lazy Man, if you don't mind. Just, yeah. you know, tell us a little bit about where you're from, you know, as far as where you grew up, about mm -hmm. your your uh, home. Yeah, basically, my name is, uh, full name is Jaime Peter Morales. I was uh, born in East LA. My mom and my uh, my dad, they, they were back in the, they used to go to Whittier. They, I think they met somewhere on Whittier or something like that. You know, they dated at a young age. My mom had me when she was like 19, 20. They didn't last very long. And then um, my mom, she migrated. She went over to Pico. We all, we all went to Pico. Like some of my aunts, they scattered everywhere from East Los. They went to La Puente. They went to uh, Pico. They just scattered Whittier. So we ended up in Pico. And uh, for the most part, we were always in and out of Pico. We were like, you know, we'd move somewhere else and then we'd come back to Pico. You know, I think my mom had, she was, uh, you know, she was in, she was on and off with work. So she got Section 8. She got, she qualified for Section 8, you know, so she, um, she got the hookup for rent. You know what I mean? So we stood there. Back then, they used to have some apartments called the Rivera Villas. And they called them the Mark 90s because they were marked by the cops. You know what I mean? So we stood in there. We stood in there. With, it was crazy because when in Pico, we lived on, I lived on both sides, man. I lived, which, you know, later on became my enemy side. And, you know, I grew up there in the early stages, elementary and all that stuff. And then towards junior high and high school, I moved to the other side. So I kind of was familiar with people from both sides, you know. So then when the gangs came in at, at you know, 14, 
it was crazy because they used to be my friends and stuff like that, you know, but, you know, I had to pick a side and stuff, man, because, you know, it was on and popping. But, you know, then shortly after I got incarcerated and then that's where we met, you know, I met Jojo, you know, right there in YTS and Chino. Uh, I was facing life at 17 years old. I was a little gangbanger and grew up in Rivera right there, Pico Rivera. And uh, I was a little knucklehead, you know, what I mean, I was just trying to put in work. I think that that's just was a generation that was the times back then. Like if you weren't from a neighborhood, you were something wrong with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it's like, you know, they had back then, like they had all these movies out, music, everything advertised gang banging. So that's what we had to look up to. That's what we had to look. We wanted to be like what was on the silver screen. You know what I mean? We go to the shows, American Me, you know, we go no matter where we go, put the music on. You got, you know, all kinds of gang banging, NWA, just gang banging, you know. So it was just it was just poured into us, you know. So to us, we looked up to them and that's what I wanted to be. And, you know, I wanted to be one of the best. I wanted to be one of the craziest, you know. So I beat life twice. I beat two life sentences. I beat a, um, I beat a attempt of murder. And then I had three carjackings. And then I, I beat that. And I ended up getting convicted for two strong arm robberies, carjackings. And I ended up getting nine years with half. And that's when, you know, before that I had was in and out. I was in placement. I was in juvenile, all the juvenile camps, Holton. I opened up Challenger. Got refiled on from there for fighting. And then went to Holton and finished off my time right there, you know, the little year. And then I came back and was fighting life and then went up to, uh, you know, all the juvenile halls right there, Central, LP, Los Padrinos. Um, and then went up to YTS, went up to Norwalk, did my 90 days, went back to county, went to YTS. And then I was there, you know, me and Georgia were there. And then that's when they killed, um, they killed a counselor when we were there. They murdered her and they found her. That was like, like 96, 96, I think it was. And then they found her, you know, the dump and whatever, you know, rest in peace, Ms. Baker. And then uh, we got shipped up to the prison. You know, I was only had like a, man, I only had like less than a year left, I think. And they ended up shipping us. So I was an M number. I was a juvenile, tries an adult. And they ended up shipping us all. We went, we, we went up, we hit, we hit the penitentiary in bus loads. And we, ended, I ended up going to Delano. I ended up in Delano. And then from Delano, I went to Soledad and I finished off. I ended up proling from the hole because I was in a, um, I was in a riot against the, the northerners and i ended up proling from the hole and the craziest thing happened is that when i went to the hole i started drawing you know i always had the ability to write like i always had good penmanship i always had that you know sh writing those female letters for everybody but when i went to uh saw that i went into the hole and i only had like you know i ended up having like four i do four months in the hole and that's when i started drawing you know i started drawing i i, I would sit at my table at the end of my table and draw for like 12 13 hours just you know, the homie cowboy for Norwalk, he used to shoot me down patterns and I used to shade them. He used to do me the outline and I used to shade them in with a pen, you know, do my routine and then just draw. And then um, I pro Christmas Eve 97 and uh, after doing five and I only got out, I got out and I was only out for four weeks. Mm. I already had two strikes because of those two stronger robberies. And when I got out, I was like, what? Uh, it was in 97 Christmas Eve. So I was 22. And um, I stood out for weeks and one of my homeboys and came picked me up and my homegirl and they took me down to the neighborhood right there to my hood. And we were not even there. We barely pulled into my homeboy's pad weasel. We pulled into his driveway. We reversed it and was we're reversing. A sheriff was passing by right there on passings. And uh, they turned around and they and my homegirl took off. We're in a minivan. She tried to ditch him. And then we made a quick right and another another left. And as we made the quick right, my homeboy jumped off and took off running. When he took off running, um, I was like, cool, I ain't tripping. Like, I'm on parole, but he split, so I'm good. So I jumped, as the cops were turning the corner, they see him run, and then they, I jumped in the front seat, and I closed the door. As I'm closing the door, like, you know, the cops come up. You're on parole or probation? I go, yeah, I'm on parole. So, you know, right away when you're on parole, they handcuff you, put you in the back seat. That's just mm -hmm. procedure. So I got handcuffed, put back in the back seat, and um, I started searching the area, and I, and the guy, cop comes back. Goes, he goes, uh, oh, it looks like we got ourselves a, a little three-striker here, huh? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, we found we found a little bag of dope. Mm. And back then they were still hanging people for that, you yeah, know? Heck yeah. So like right there and then, man, like I was sitting in the backseat handcuffed already. Only been out four weeks. I got out Christmas Eve, 97. It was what, like January 20th or something like that. And I'm right back in the backseat of the cop car, you know? And it's just like a nightmare. I could feel like the devil just laughing at me through the window. Like, I got you now. And right when he told me that, a cop told me that, like, I felt that evil presence back there because, you know, the devil was mad. And um, I'm back in the I'm back at the station trying to get a hold of my homie. Like, hey, you need to come get your, take your rap, homie. Like, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be my dog. That was supposed to be my my day one, my crimey from before. And uh, he didn't want to come forward, bro. 
So he's probably thinking, why didn't you run? You were on parole. He probably yeah. thought you were going to well, I didn't know. Too. Like, I was like, well, if he hasn't done, he took it with him. Oh, yeah. But yeah. right when he got the car, he threw it on threw the floor. It on the floor. Yeah. No, like, I get it. So I'm in the county fighting three strikes. I, I, I was fighting three strikes for like probably like eight months. And I went there stressing, <laughs> you know, but um, in his God. defense, Pete, did he have any prior strikes or anything? Supposedly he said that he would be in the same, but he was just oh, lying. Okay. He was just lying. He was, he, he wouldn't, he didn't have the, the, the violent cases that I had. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, um, they wanted to try to get another homeboy to come, come and take the, the rap and the homeboy's all big. I like, man, they ain't going to fall for that. So I had two cops testifying against me and I had my home girl who was kind of smoked out. I, I can't trust her defense. So I was right there, you know, I had a state appointer. Uh, instead, instead of public defender, I had a state appointment, which is a little bit better, I mm -hmm. guess. And I was just fighting it, taking the trial, going to trial. And then they offered me a deal with eight years with 80%. And I was like, nah, I can't take that, man. I just did five. This dope ain't even, I don't even do dope. And you guys want me to go back and do another six and a half? Like, nah, I'm straight. I can't. I, I just can't. I can't admit to that and do that much time. So then uh, we're getting ready to start picking the jury. And the day before we start getting ready to, you know, a jury trial, um, they came in with another deal. And I was like, well, what is it? And they said, uh, you know, you better take this. You got two cops testifying against you. You know, they, they find you guilty. You're gone for life. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Uh, what is it? They said, it's 32 months with 80. I says, well, how much will I do? And they're like, probably like two years. And I was like, I, you know, give me five minutes to give me five minutes alone. I was in that one by cell by myself. And I just, I started talking to God, man. I was like, man, God, like this sucks, you know, like, but I guess this is my medicine. Because when I got out, I wasn't taking care of business. I was I was just straight headed back down that same path. And I says, you know what? I'm not guilty of this crime, but I'm guilty of other stuff that I've done. And in my mind, that made it possible for me to take that deal. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have took it. Mm -hmm. So I says, you know what? Um, here, what do I sign? Took the deal, went back up and did two more years. In that time that I was doing two years, it was a little bit easier. I went up to Susan. I went to Delano again, and then I went up to Susan, you know, Susie's house, way up there, up in the boondocks. And... um. And I was right there in the yard, and uh, I had a couple homeboys over to me, my homeboy Spike and Weddle, and then another homeboy, my Goofy, showed up. So I was able to start, um, we was dorm living this time, because my points were lower this time, and I ended up um, started tattooing in the dorms. And I was trying, my homie, my homie was a tattoo artist too, you know. So to me, like, it was just a good opportunity for me to um, get better. And that's what I did. I started tattooing on the yard and all the homies and, you know, my homeboys. And, um, and then I ended up going to camp, and it was awesome, because when I went to camp, I told them that I was an artist, so they... In my file, when I seen my uh, caseworker, she put me down as an artist. So that when I went to camp, uh, they told them that I was an artist. So they put me as a graphic design artist. So it worked out cool because I didn't have to go out into the grade and cut wood. Like, that's what you do in fire camp. You got to mm -hmm. go out there. You got to cut logs. You got to just do some dumb stuff early in the morning, freezing your butt off. Yeah. And I was able to be in camp. So every day I'll go down there and I'll be able to do what I love to do. And I got better at my at my job and my profession. And down there, I had a white boy that used to teach me the tricks of drawing how to draw and tattoo. So it seemed like everything was kind of pointing that way. I did two years and to be, believe it or not, those two years felt like more longer than the five years I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick though, that graphic arts. So yeah. was that a trade? Was that like, yeah, basically, so what, what, I mean, what were you, what was that about? What it was is that we, since we were in fire camp, we were designing the logos for all the other. Camps. Oh, okay. So if they needed a new logo, we did it from scratch because uh, now they have the computers. But back then, we used to, have to do that mm -hmm. by hand. So we had to cut everything out, put the dots with the different kinds of grades of, sh of uh, shades. And then we had the camera. We did like we did everything right there from start to oh, finish. Wow. And then we do the printing. Oh, cool. So I was the one that designed the art. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it, it, it all fell in line with what I love to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and to be honest with you, I didn't have no experience with art. I just had the, the desire to want to be an artist. I just, and the time. Let's yeah. Practice. Yeah. Cause you know, what's crazy is that when I did, when I was in the hole and saw that I mm. prayed and I asked God for the ability to draw. Like I literally asked him for that gift. Mm -hmm. You know, I was already, I wasn't a young straight. I mean, I was young still, but yeah. I'm saying I wasn't young, young when I started drawing, I was in my early twenties. Um, so anyways, I paroled from that, that time I paroled in 2000, February 10th, 2000. I got out fresh, 25 years old, just turned 25 a week before, six days before that. I hit the streets. I hadn't been out since 92 because I don't count the four weeks. Mm. <laughs> Fresh out. <laughs> I'm just living with my, sleeping on my brother's couch. I had nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was just me, me against the world. <laughs> mm. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just started looking, started from the bottom, going to agencies, you know, looking, working, doing construction. I found a agent. I found a couple jobs that I just like, this ain't me, man. They gave me jobs that I felt like a monkey could do. You know mm. what I mean? So I was like, nah, man, like it, it was, it was crazy because I felt like 
if I go do a job that I don't want to do and I don't like to do, I feel like I'm still incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to put me to do something that I don't want to do? I yeah. don't know how people can do that. I feel like I'm still doing time. So I literally walked out on a couple of jobs. I was there for like 20 minutes. I told me, hey, I fouled back there. I got to go. I don't want to be here. <laughs> so I went through like four or five jobs. I got one that was all right, but I blew it because I was still trying to catch up. I was trying to party. I was trying to, and it was a graveyard. And they ended up, the, the boss, he tried to believe in me, tried to give me a job. And and I just, um, I blew it. You know what I mean? He gave me three chances and I was late, late, late. He's like, you know what? I got to let you go. It was a great, I was working for Warner Brothers. It was, it was printing CDs. It was just all right, good job. And then I got a construction job and this dude from Bassett, he helped, his name was Tony Reyes. He helped me be his helper because he used to do like marble and granite. So I was just trying to find my place in the world, man. I was like, man, well, but I hated everything that I did. Mm -hmm. And then one day I just says, you know what? Um, I'm going to go back to doing what I know how to do, mm -hmm. you know? And that's when I picked up the tattoo gun. Opportunity came knocking and I was prepared. I was ready. You know, some girl um, that I met through another, she invited me to, through another homie. She invited me to a tattoo party. She said, hey, why don't you bring, um, bring your tattoo equipment, uh, your little, your little equipment. And I had a homemade stuff, bro. You still had the, the Walkman motor and, uh, <laughs> I, did. I and brought a it home cap and everything. Cause I had two machines in there. So I brought one home in the baby pot. Like, I'm gonna leave one for the homies and I'll take this one for myself. <laughs> so I came home with the, with the homemade, with the Walkman uh, motor and I had it in my, oh, and the baby and I started messing around and we got to the tattoo party and it was crazy because it was in my enemy's neighborhood. So I was even kind of skeptical going, I'm like, man, who's going to be there? I don't know. She's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. These casual people. I said, all right, cool. We walk up into the pad. Um, I sit down. I'm, I'm in the kitchen. He's in the den or wherever. I can hear the loud. Bzzz. I'm like, dang, that's a real tattoo gun right there, you know? So I was sitting and I start setting up. And I start pulling out my little battery pack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nah, this thing going to cut it. I go, you know what? I go, I appreciate it, but let's just do this another time. I don't feel comfortable, you know, doing it. Well, I got a professional in the next room. Yeah. But I still want to meet homeboy if it's cool. So she's like, yeah, yeah. So I met him. I go, hey, doggo, I just got out. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a big, I'm trying to do it like you, man. Like he's, I go, you think you can help me out? And his name was Barney. I'll never forget him, man. He's like, he was feeding me. Like he was a good, good older homie from Norwalk. And he's like, yeah, he goes, yeah, I'll help you. Like, I'll show you. Just hit me up. Like it was page. He had a pager. He gave me his pager number. He was funny. He was a character, man. He, he had, you know, he passed away a couple of years late after that, but he kind of showed me the ropes, man. Mm -hmm. He used to take me with him. We used to go do tattoo parties all over the place, bro. I'm talking about everywhere. This guy knew so many people. Like, back then, tattoo parties were in. Everybody wanted to have parties at their house. And, you know, lo and behold, we'd go show up, and they rolled out the red carpet for us. And, you know, sometimes it was cool. Like, we'd get treated VIP. Sometimes it was ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be in an alley, so my, a parking lot. I'm like, what, what are you doing here? With the candle as a light. <laughs> yeah, and what happened was he, he was dope. Like, he was a good homie. Yeah. He was older, but he liked to party. Yeah, that thing so, sounds so familiar, man. I, yeah, yeah, I'm no, everybody knew him. this guy. He was known, Barney, he always had a, a rhyme, Barney Bubble, start no trouble, you know, lick him and stick yeah. him. That's, that's not a, a very popular name, but no, I remember that no. name, especially from that area. Bro, bro. You know that I mean? dude, so, that dude was known on the streets, man. Yeah, I probably did. I think I did. Yeah, and he took me under the wing for a little bit, and I learned what I could learn from him, but mm -hmm. I started seeing him get too sloppy. I said, I gotta, we gotta part ways. So I did, and, you know, I, I started trying to do it on my own. And, um, and, but I'll never forget him. You know, he, he was a blessing God. And even the girl that took me to the tattoo party, she took me to this party. And then later on, she says, you know what? I see something in you. I go, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't know. Like you seem, there's like energy about you that is different from a lot of people out here. She's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to invest into you. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, uh, what does it say? Sponsor, not sponsor. Kind of like endorse you. Something like that. Like she took me down to go get inks. She spent like 120 bucks on me. To me, that was a lot of money, bro. Yeah. I'm fresh out. 20 bucks is a lot of money. And I couldn't believe that she did. I go, I don't know. I don't understand. And I, and I just, I wasn't hooking up with her. Nothing like mm -hmm. that. She just seen something in me that I, the inspiration, the motivation, you know, I was inspiring, I guess, the way I was talking. I knew what I wanted, bro. You know, even when I was living with my mom, I told my mom, mom, let me tattoo in the garage. Let me, I'll pay your bills. I'll, I'll help you. Like, trust me. I see it. Like, mm -hmm. I already seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, I foreseen it. And my mom didn't, she didn't let me. Out there and point there in, there in your hood. And uh she's like, nah, um, no, nah, you're crazy. I don't want all kinds of people in my house. Get a real job. You know, she didn't she didn't believe in me, you know. But this girl, she went down there, she spent all this $120 for me. Like I said, she bought all my colored inks. She bought me like a, a good amount of color inks. And I was just grateful. But I just see these people, 
that like I feel like God placed him in my life. You know what I mean? Because if it wouldn't have been for Barney, it wouldn't have been for her, it wouldn't have been for Barney, you know, it wouldn't have been for my even my mom doubting me. Because once, you know, you know, when you live with your mom, you don't get along with your mom. Man. Mm. <laughs> so that what I was living there for because my brother kicked me out because I, you know, was not, uh, wasn't doing nothing there. So he didn't want to kick me out. His wife was, was tripping. So I want to go stay with my mom. And, um, you know, living with moms made me realize, like, man, I got to get out of here. You know, I got to get out of here, bro. I never coming back. I love my mom. <laughs> like, we get along better when I don't live with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we cool. But just from her not believing in me made me want to go harder. And you know what's crazy? Because even recently she said, like, I was talking about that on another podcast. And she's like, you know what, son? I was one of those doubters. <laughs> she's like, but I believe in it now. She supports me. You know, when I won, when I, I did a show in 2009 in Orange County, uh, nine years after I got out, I won my first award. Mm -hmm. And it was special, bro. And I, I remember it was a group. I had a, I had a group of homies. And we went to go eat after. It was it was the first time I ever entered an, a competition at a convention. And then we went to go eat to celebrate. Everybody was happy. They're excited for me because I was like their, their leader, you know? And uh, it was Tattoo of the Day. And that's one of the hardest awards to win because you got to go up against a different pieces. It's not just a, a category. It's everything for the show. Mm -hmm. And I won. I beat out a really good artist, the homie A.B. A.B., from, he's over there from Pomona. He lives in Pomona. So A.B. Alvarez, anyways, uh, he even came and told me, congratulations, dog. I feel me, gracias, whatever. So they went to the restaurant, and I went outside. I stepped outside the restaurant, and nobody knew what I was going to do. I went to go call my mom. You know what I mean? I go, mom, guess what? And she's like, what? What happened? I go, I, go, I freaking, I just won an award at the show. You know what I mean? And she's like, what? She's like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I remember, like, I just started crying, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an emotional person. And, uh. And I just started tearing up because I never thought that I would ever, that would ever happen. You mm -hmm. know, because remember, I started in the hole. Like, I started in prison. I started in YA. You know, most of the times, the homies that are in there, they don't accumulate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them do it just to try to get high. They yeah. try to get the next fix. Yep. You know, but I knew that um, that it was just, it was all, all or nothing. You know what I mean? So here we are, 24 years later, I stand here. And I've been able to travel all over the world, you know, mainly the United States. I've been all over the place. I've won over 60, not bragging, I'm bragging in the Lord. You know, if you don't brag, brag, boast in the Lord. And he's given me the ability to be able to travel. Um, you know, I've won over 60 awards. I've been to Rome. I've been to the East Coast, Hawaii so many times. You know, I'm just doing something. I just got back from Baltimore a couple of days yeah, ago. Yeah. You know, and I'm blessed, man. Like, I, I'm living the life, you know what I mean? And, and I'm able to tell about it. And what I do now is I find myself, you know, um, just trying to be an inspiration to the younger the younger dudes that are trying to come in. Because I tell them, like, it's funny because they see me now and they see me established and they see me with, you know, my whips, my cars. And they see me, I got a shop. I just recently got a shop right here in West Covina. They see all this, but they didn't see the process. You know what I mean? They didn't see the homemade guns and you know, all that stuff, you know, burning chess pieces and <laughs> toothbrush and checker pieces. You know, what's funny is we were, uh, I was at a tattoo convention. I mean, uh, not a convention. I was at a, a backyard tattoo party in San Fed, only in San Fed in the back in the Valley. And I was tatting on the homies and, uh, I got a phone call and, um, I was tatting on his arm. I was doing a charter or something like that. And they go, they call me and me. I'm like, Hey, your baby's mom going into labor. <laughs> <laughs> I had to leave the tattoo unfinished and I had to jump in the car. My my daughter Bridget was born that mm -hmm. day from at a tattoo party. You know what I mean, I was and I had to leave. I had to drop the gun. Like I'm out of here, bro. You know what I mean? Just so many different crazy experiences. You know yeah. what I mean? That I had. I met a lot of people. You know what's crazy? Another. I'll share another one with you. Um, I started. I met. I met a lot of uh, sheriffs through a brother, a friend of mine, a D boy. He was. Uh, he used to work. There. He was a dispatcher, a nine one one operator. Uh -huh. So he linked me with a bunch of uh, Compton sheriffs. And uh, they used to call me over, and I used to uh, go tattoo on them. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a certain crowd from within them. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get too much into that, but I was their personal tattoo artist. Mm. The, and I remember one time they invited me over to their pad, and uh, one of them lived in Chino. So here I am rolling up. You know, I've been out for a, a little bit now, but still though, like it's crazy. I'm rolling up to their pad, and as I'm going, it's like a little uh, cul-de-sac. It's like a dead end, whatever. And I drive up to the pad. <laughs> they surround you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's a freaking sergeant yeah, SUV. Uh -huh. There's an undercover NARC car there. There's a canine unit there. These cars are all up on their freaking driveway in the parking lot. Yeah. And here I am walking into that pad and go tattoo on them. Like, it blew my mind. 
know what I mean? Because I used to hate the cops. Yeah. You know, those are my enemies. I hated them. I, I I despised them. I didn't like cops because I always I feared them because they represented, you know, to us opposition. Opposition yeah. enemies, you know what I mean? But here, here I was, like that's just what God did. I, you know, the scripture says, you know, when your man's are pleased, your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he'll make even your enemies at peace with you. And um, to me that day, it was like a, a revelation of where I was at, that you know, where I had where I had came. You know, because of the talent and the gift that God had given me. He said, all good things come from above. You know, you have not because you ask not. Literally, I prayed for that gift and God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and awesome. and uh, like I said, um, you know, I don't even enter. I don't even care about entering awards anymore because it's not even about that anymore. There was a minute where I was like, oh, oh, it's cool. Enter this, enter that. Let's get some awards. But it's not even about that. Man. I love what I'm doing. My, my reward is getting paid <laughs> and my customer being happy mm -hmm. about the piece that I do. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's opened up other doors. I also um, was able to launch. I got a. Uh, I ended up buying a. I. I. I got. This was a God-given idea because I said, you know what? I need another source of income. I need an idea, God. I need an idea. He. He gave me the idea of a party bus. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I went out there in 2019 and I bought a um, a Mercedes van, and I decked it all out. I dropped some a pretty penny on it. Um, you know, and uh, I was able to, um, shh, that thing has been an investment to me. And like, I've been profiting it. I'm sitting here sometime. I'll be sitting at home and it's making me making money. You money. You know I made I mean? you money off that yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking out. Yeah, brother came through for me, uh, yeah. for my daughter. During COVID, as a matter of fact, yeah. you know, nothing was open or nothing. We still wanted mm -hmm. to get some pictures in. So, yeah, yeah he let us, our, well, you know, he allowed us to use the van and we took it down to uh, Universal Studios, Santa Monica. A boy Enrique was the chauffeur. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh. <laughs> yeah, driving uh, driving reckless. Nah, he was good though. But yeah, man. And then we use it again for my daughter, my other daughter's. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. We use it twice. Okay. I forgot yeah, for thing, what, but I forgot. Yeah, for my both of them were for my daughters though. Yeah, it's been a blessing yeah. to me. I'm telling you, like that. That I know that was the God given idea. And then not too long ago, I I got another thing because the thing the way I look at it is, um, if you're gonna do something, of course, do it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. but do something that you love to do because then it's not work. Yeah. Me, um, I love to draw. Like I love, I love seeing the outcome of what my talent and the God given ability can do my, the sprinter van. I like going showing up in style. So I was like, at first it was going to be for me. Like I was going to tattoo out of it, yeah, yeah. you know, but then somebody says, make money off of it. Let it, let it make in. Yeah. And then, Pay and then itself yeah. Off and yeah. So everything I've been doing is because those are things that I love to do and I'm able to make. And I still like it's cool because we'll roll up, we'll go to events, we'll go places. I'll take my mom on Mother's Day or not even Mother's Day. It doesn't have to be a, a, a holiday. We'll go out together. I'll take my kids wherever. You know what I mean? We show up nice. We, we're all together. Uh, and then recently I got another um, inspired idea and I, uh, I started my own clothing line. Yeah, I started my own clothing line. Um, my brand is untouchable. That's like pretty much for everything. Like my tattoo, it's, um, you know, my name on Instagram is Mr. Untouchable. The reason, I don't know, the way I got that name is because I had a bunch of dudes that were with me in the beginning and Instagram came off and I was still on Facebook and then everybody started jumping on Instagram. So here I go make an account. And uh, when I get on there, all my boys had Untouchable tattoo already, Untouchable this, Untouchable. I'm like, dude, you guys, that's me. That's my, you know, so what am I going to put? So then that's why I said, you know, I'm going to be Mr. Untouchable. You know what I mean? And yeah. and that's how that name came about. And it's crazy because, uh, you know, I'll be at the market or I'll be somewhere random. And, you know, going, I'll be walking into a club and security knows who I, they know who I am or market. They want to take pictures. And I'm humbled by it. You know what I mean? Like, it's dope. You know what I mean? When it barely started happening, um, it was crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I was shocked. It was just, to me, it's like, man, social media is powerful, bro. You know what I was thinking of right now, though, because I believe your logo is like a lion, it right? Is. Yeah, it's a lion with the with the crown. With a crown, mm -hmm. yeah. And when I think about that, and I know you're humble, I know mm -hmm. you, you're grateful for you know the status that you're at, you know, mm -hmm. and you 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 openly give glory to God and you yeah. know praise His name, you know. But I think about that logo representing Jesus, yeah. bro, with that crown and of course Him being untouchable. Yeah, and you're a child of His, so that makes you untouchable. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. I can say I'm Mr. Untouchable. <laughs> well, it's crazy because trip on this when no, I um, like that logo though, bro. Thank That's you, bro. Tight. Thank you. When when uh okay, so the way the name Untouchable came about, let me just run you down how that name came apart up uh, about because a lot of people always wonder like, where'd you get that name from? That's a dope, dope name. I says I tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. If initially it was 
for my clique, for my neighborhood, mm -hmm. but it was in Spanish, mm -hmm. in Tocables. It was a group of us, four of us, that got together. We were tired of all the gang of the other surrounding neighborhoods that were coming in, killing our homies. Mm -hmm. So we got together and we started putting in a lot of work together, four of us. Um, and we started calling ourselves in Tocables. So initially it started out a negative thing. So when I got out of prison, I needed a business because at first I was just going by Sir Lazy. That was on my cards. I'm like, okay, that doesn't sound too inspiring, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want nobody working on me being lazy. <laughs> yeah, so everybody that was from my clique, I, I let them know, like, hey, I'm going to use the name. Like, I mean, just the ones that I still talk to, you know, mm -hmm. and I changed it to Untouchable. But then it started coming to me, and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, there's scripture. This is this is a good thing now. Like, I'm turning it around for good. What, what the enemy meant for bad, I'm turning it around for good. Because there's a scripture that says, uh, touch not mine anointing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, and then when I started doing my clothing line, I put the T as a cross. And people like that. And then I says, you know what? I need another logo that goes with that. And then I, I sat down one day and I started going through images. I designed the lion. I was the one that put that together because I says, you know what? I love lions, but... I always, there's only two animals that God compares himself to is one is the lion and the other one's the eagle. And I says, you know, the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know what I mean? I, I like that. And that's how that came apart. I uh, came about, I don't know why I keep saying apart. That's how that came about. And ever since then, I've been rocking it. I've been, you know, so many people have gotten that tattoo on them in support of me, you know, and people that are, that are close to me, mm -hmm. you know, that I feel like, you know, they've earned that tattoo. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've gotten it tatted on me because um, that's just my brand. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and it's something that is special to me that, like I said, God turned it around for good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it didn't come easy and it didn't come with a lot of haters. Let me tell you. Oh, well, I could imagine. <laughs> but I it's imagine. all good, man. I take it all in stride. Everything I believe that's happened, happened for a reason. You know, I know that my life is in God's hands. I know that without a shadow of doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rec recently, you know, I, I, I've always, uh, when I got out, I had, I had some kids. I had daughters. Mm -hmm. And I've been a girl dad for a long time. You know, I was just, man, God, all right. You know, I felt like, all right, God, <laughs> I see what, you know, I felt like God was just giving me girls because he wanted to, you know, he wanted to make me more soft. You know, that's what they say. When you have a daughter, it's a softening you. Mm -hmm. you know, when you get a, a son, it's to give you strength. You know what I mean? Um, so recently I was blessed with the son. He was right there. <laughs> yeah, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah. Yeah, he's a know. good baby right there. Just chilling. Oh, yeah, he's super chill. I love him. He's been a, he's a blessing to me. And I never thought. At this point, I feel like Abraham. I know I was an older Abraham, but I'm older in my older <laughs> years. And God bless you with a son. And it, and it came at a time where I just, it wasn't something that was planned. And, you know, and and I feel like, you know, God knew that I needed that. He needed him, you know. Because mm -hmm. ever since he's been here, a lot of stuff has, I cut off. You know what I mean? Yeah. I stopped. I realized, like, you know what, man? This, when I see him, I see myself as a young boy, you know. And, I, and, and you know, my dad... You know, not not being there for us many of the time that I was growing up, you know, I, I it makes me realize I, I got to be there for this kid. Yeah. You know, you know, Pete, you kind of like fast forward the whole interview, like in 33, 33 <laughs> minutes, you already gave us your whole story where you're at. <laughs> I mean, you're about to wrap it up, man. But you know what? Because we are trap families and we talk a lot about, you know, about the yeah. struggles of yeah. the early years, because. You going through all the juvenile halls, all the camps, mm. opening up Challenger, going to YA, going to prison, getting involved in the gangs, the dope scene, you know, all the crazy stuff. Yeah. Were you influenced at all in the home? I know in the neighborhoods, of course, but what was it like in Pete's younger years in the home? You know, your mom, your dad. I know you mentioned your brother. You know, what was it like in the early years? You jumped all the way. Tyler, you went from elementary and the other side of Rivera, and then yeah. you end up going the other side of junior high. But what was the home like in the early years? You know, like, um, basically, like when my mom and my dad are together, I don't remember because I was so young, you know, from, mm -hmm. I mean, somewhere along the line, <clears throat> they were both young themselves. They were kids themselves. You know, now that I'm older and I look back, I'm like, man, they're, they're kids. They were youngsters themselves. And, uh, you know, we're babies. We don't know any. We're youngsters. But in the beginning, in the early years, I don't remember. But I remember a couple of times fighting. I remember violence. What I do remember was arguing or or violence. You know what I mean? I was young. But, but I you know, I can remember, you know, even my mom talking about it after the fact. You know what I mean? And we were raised uh, by my mom making us to having us to believe that my dad was like a monster. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My dad was was one of the worst evil. To, you know, she was bitter. You know, she was hurt. She was coming from a hurt place, you know. So she didn't want nothing for us to have nothing to do with them. I think he probably left when I was like three, four years old. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, he left He left uh, my mom and my mom was young and uh, she had to figure things out. You know, my mom had to figure things out. It was just me and my older brother at the time, my brother Al. And um, we were little traviesos, you know. But my mom, you know, she didn't leave us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I give my mom a lot of credit because regardless <clears throat> of what happened, she never left us and she never gave up, bro. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom was really, really young and really, really mean. <laughs> you know, I, times were different back then, bro. Like, you know, the, hitting kids was okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> so me and my dad, me and my brother, I mean, we got raised being hit all the time. And, mm-hmm. and my mom, we don't, we don't like to shed a lot of light on it mm-hmm. because, you know, it was, it was the dark years. But if we keeping it real, keeping it 100, like my mom used to like use a lot of different freaking things on us because she didn't have control of us. When we were little, it was all good. You know, we're, we're little babies. But when she started getting to a certain age, like she couldn't control us, man. She, and even after a while, she couldn't, even the stuff that she would use wouldn't hurt us. Like mm-hmm. We just go through the motions, you know what I mean? But but it was it was a lot of um, animosity in growing up. My mom, I remember uh, always yelling always mad i i feel that she felt like she got cheated you know she felt like she got cheated because my dad left Mm -hmm. and he left her to raise two young men by herself and she didn't know what she was doing Mm -hmm. she tried her best though and i love her and i thank her for that um was it really just your mom like raising you a lot of them years or was there like a stepdad there was never no nah dudes would come and I guess when they will see what kind, of, what kind of kids we were, you know, or, you know, I don't know. I know we probably, you know, see beat on my mom a lot, but we were, we were young. We didn't, we didn't know, man. We didn't, we didn't want no other dudes around. Mm-hmm. I remember one time my mom brought some dude home and we were in the, I was in the room and I could see her from, from where I was in my bed. And the dude was like, you know, he was trying to like get, like trying to kiss my mom. And I just started yelling. Like I was probably like seven years old, eight years old. I didn't want to see some other fool yeah. you know, with moms. You know what I mean? And, and then um, what happened was, is like, we even were homeless. You know, mm. we were even hopeless for a couple, a couple times. I remember sleeping in the car. Mm. You know, I remember um, my mom, she was too, she was too prideful. She didn't want, she had eight sisters and she didn't want to go to none of them, you know, for help. She, she was just too prideful. She didn't want to ask nobody for help. My mom was very strong. She was very, you know, prideful. And I remember like for a couple of weeks, you know, until I think we were waiting for, for section eight to clear. She was uh, getting us ready with our clothes in the, in the trunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to, you know, get ready in the car and go to school like that. You know what I mean? Um, we were poor. You know, we were raised on welfare. You know what I mean? Poverty was, it, it's what it was. You know, food stamps, all that stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We're moving from place to place. We we even were homeless. We had to go stay in Gardena because my mom used to go party out there. And she knew, like, the dudes from Gardena out there. And one of my brothers is actually from a guy from Gardena. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She had a baby from somebody out there. And we used to, like... You know, we were even living in some dude's motorhome for a little bit. You know, we we're just all over the place, man. It's not something that we're proud of, but yeah. you know, and we can look back now and see, like, you know what? Like that's that's just the the route that we had to take, and you know, thank God that we're not there no more. Yeah. What's crazy is, <clears throat> no, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but I mean, just my dad did disappear for a long time. From what I understand, he told me that he would try to look for us, but she, my mom, had always moved around. So there's two different sides. Yeah. Um. One day, I, me and my brother were at the park in Pico, in Rio Vista Park right there. And, you know, I used to play, like, Little League right there. When I used to play baseball, park leagues. We couldn't afford the league, so we did the park league, $5 leagues. And um, some little girl came up to me, and she's like, hey, you're my brother. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Who are you? I was, like, 10, 11 years old. Yeah. 11 years old. She's like, I'm gonna go, let me go call my dad real quick. And I call my brother. I go, hey, fool, like. This little girl just came up to me and said, she's my sister, you know? She came back with with my dad, you know? We we seen him right there. Like, we hadn't seen him in years, mm-hmm. you know? I hadn't seen him since I was a baby. And, mijo, you know, he's trying to, oh, I've been looking. I don't, and I was like, dude, I don't I didn't even know who he was, you know what I mean? Because I'm your dad, you know? And um, he had my stepmom with me. I didn't even know who she was neither. So they followed us home that day. I mean, he, my dad, I talked, because I talked to him now. We're cool now, you know? And he's like, uh, that day I thought your mom was going to go crazy. And sorry, but she was at that time we had started going to church. My mom started taking her to the church. So she was in different spirits. And from that point on, I started going over to his house on the weekends. Okay. Me and my brother every other weekend, you know? 
Dang. So that was from like three to eleven. That gap. Yeah, something, that? Like something like that. Like that. Yeah, something like that, bro. It's kind of fuzzy, but it was something around that time. Wow. You know what I mean? And it, and it was weird. Those they were my sisters. They were my stepsisters. They were my stepmoms. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's who they were. There was there was two of them. They were so cool. they weren't even really your dad's. No, kids. no, they weren't his. Oh, okay. No, he was just you know they they came into his life at a young age and he raised them pretty much, and then. I started going over there and then I started getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we were living in the hood. Like we were living right there in the Rivera Villas and um, the seed was already in me. Mm -hmm. Like at 10, 11, 12 years old, like, you know, gang bang, you just started, like we come out to the apartment, there'd be big old blocks of my neighborhood right there on the wall and going to school. And you, you know, you try to walk past it, but it's just, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was like an epidemic. And my mom started seeing me like one day I ditched school and we went to the mall and we were, me and my homies, my friends, we were stealing, we got caught stealing, town center. So they, one of my homies got caught stealing, not all, mm. and he took us all down with him. Mm. So she started, they put me on independent studies. I was, you know, I wasn't even, I guess. So, so that was the birthing of you going yeah, down. Yeah, that back. was pretty much like, and I remember, man, I was walking to school and my homies like, hey, let's go, let's ditch. And then, and I did. So my mom, she sent me to go live with my dad in West Covina. Oh, okay. So all the way from Pico de to to me, I was like, dang, I felt like a, I felt like a Will Smith in that, you know, that episode of going from movie from Philly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to Bel Air, wherever yeah, you moved yeah, yeah. to. And um, it was different back then. You know, it was it was really integrated. West Covina was really integrated back yeah. then. It wasn't a lot of Mexicans, bro. Mm. It was whites, blacks, exactly. everything. And I started, I was like probably like uh, seventh grade. And they transferred like middle of seventh grade. And I was a new kid. And my dad tried to um, take over, you know, he tried to take over. And, and at first he he was good. It was good. He put me in Little League. I, I, I never played for a real park league before. He put me in football. I played uh, played for Azusa Raiders. Okay. And then, um, so things were going good. I, I finished seventh grade. Then I, I did eighth grade. So then all of a sudden those those demons came back. And I started hanging around with the with some of the home, with some of the fellows that 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 lived on my block, and we were all little wannabes, you know. We 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 wanted to be little cholos, you know, little gangsters, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we'd walk to school together, and I would change my clothes at his pad. You know, I would leave the pad a certain way, and I would you know change my clothes down the street or whatever, put bigger pants on, whatever. I remember I even started sticking my hair back at that time. You know what I mean? Because that was the look <laughs> <laughs> with the hair knit on, huh? <laughs> yeah. So everything. Like, you know, it started, I was starting, I was already, what, 13? So what happened was, uh, I started hanging out with these dudes, and they weren't bad kids, to be honest with you, but we're Mexican, so we already have, like, a, you know, they already look at us some type of way, you know what I mean? And uh, I go to school every day with them, and we just, you know, we hang out, and, uh, you know, the white boys, they didn't, I got into it with this big old white boy there, and they kicked me out of that school because of that. I went to another high school, and I was supposed to graduate. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets crazy. I was supposed to graduate from the school, Las Palmas, right there in, I don't even know what city that is, not too far from where we lived at. And uh, I got caught ditching or something like that. But my dad had already spent a lot of money um, on my graduation clothes. Promotion, I guess they call it promotion now, mm -hmm. right? He had already, and back then there was some pants called uh, Z Cavarucci's. They were expensive pants, they were like 70 bucks, something like that, I don't know. But he had bought me them. Cause he wanted me to wear those and I was going to wear those and he bought me like an outfit. He was all excited, whatever. But then he got a letter in the mail and the letter said, uh, your son will not be graduating. Will not uh. be, will not be walking. <laughs> He's going to graduate, yeah, yeah. but we ain't going to let him do the ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, but it was already other little things that were building up. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a couple other things that I was doing when I got home that day. Um, he put hands on me. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. He put hands on me and he didn't just put hands on me like a kid. He put hands on me like a man. Mm -hmm. Like like straight up. You know what I mean? And I was like 13, maybe. Yeah, I was probably 13 and a half, probably about to be 14, something like that. And uh and I remember that day. He he, he uh we talked about it not too kind of semi talked about it. It's kinda it's kinda shied away now. Like, you know, you don't like talking about that now. Mm -hmm. But I, one day I am gonna have that talk with him. You know, because from after that, I said, I'm going home. I don't want to be here no more. You know? Going back to your mom's house, back, back to, to the neighborhood. Mom. I want to go back to the hood. I, mm. And this is when I learned something about myself. Because when I went back, I went back with a chip on my shoulder. I was mad. I was like, you, you want to treat me? I'm going to show you what bad could be. Um, and I went back to mom's. 
she, I had went to go with my mom for the weekend. And I told her, I'm not going back. He, he put my, I told my brother what happened. My brother wanted to kill him. My brother still to this day is bitter with my brother, my dad, because of that. Mm. You know, he, he, he can, I forgave my dad. Yeah. But, but we, my dad had priors, you know, with my mom's and everybody, mm. you know what I mean? So he had, he, you know, I, I, my dad's a good dude now. And I, I love my dad, man. Like he, he redeemed himself. You know, he really did, man. Recent, like a couple, within the last couple of years, we really got really clean. He went through some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I went back to mom's pad. 89 was the, was the Ooh, year. That was crazy Ooh. years in the neighborhoods too. <laughs> 89. You know, I don't know if you know this, but it, it said that that was the year of the gang <laughs> member. 89. Uh, I, I mean, I can yeah, tell. Totally I different. And uh, mom's, um, I remember it was the summer of 89. Mm. Trip on this, Jojo. I lived in those apartments still. She still lived there. And I remember that my church that I go to now had sent a team of people to go minister there that day. And they had a they had a parking lot down there in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So they set up chairs. They said they rolled a little TV. You know, you're doing yeah, yeah, school. Yeah. And um, all the little neighbors, all the little Rivetta kids, the, the Villa kids went and they started watching the movie. They played Duke of Rowe. <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're watching. We're all sitting there, and by the you know, and it's it's intriguing to us because it's like oh, those are homies. Oh, they they talk. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want to be. Whatever. And earlier that day, or the day before, I forgot what it was, but I had talked to some of my home. They were from the hood already. Guys, my age, like, hey, I want to get them to the to the neighborhood. All right, yeah, we'll do it. Don't trip, don't trip. So, anyways, I'm watching the movie. Get saved. Tears in my eyes, do the altar call, all that stuff. Drying my eyes. They're praying for me, whatever. Mm -hmm. Drying my eyes. Mm -hmm. And my homeboy's in the back. Hey, hey, uh, Pete, call me Pete. Hey, Pete, come here. And I go, oh, I got to go. And I told the pastor dudes, I go, hey, I got to go. And I go, what's up? He goes, come on, we need to go jump you in. <laughs> <laughs> so God, like, I feel, I feel that happened for a reason, though. I feel like that was God putting, a, like, his signature on me, you know? Because he knew what I was about to, go, to go do. Through. Yeah, I was about to sign a contract with the devil. But God wanted me to know, like, hey, I got you first. You you, you know, mm -hmm. I put my seal on you first. Immediately after I got saved, I got jumped into my neighborhood. Wow. And um, yeah, they I never were, knew that. Yeah, they, they, they you know, that's, I, feel, I feel like that's when, like, the seed was really planted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I got jumped in. And then everything changed. I, f I honestly believe that when you get jumped into a neighborhood, you get you get certain demons that get assigned to you, because everything changes. Yeah, you know, I honestly everything. feel like 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 a, a demon takes starts like try to take control of you, man. Because I changed everything. I changed my my attitude, my walk, my talk, my dress. You know how it is, man. We freaking you just feel like a certain you know spirit on you, man. Yeah. Where you just you feel like let's do this. Especially at that point in time in my life, yeah. you know what I mean? And everything just started going crazy from then, bro. Yeah. Everything started going crazy. You know, my mom's, she 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 got wind. She figured out I got into the hood. And my brother joined right after. My cousin, you know. And, and at first it was fun. Oh, man, game. I mean, being in the neighborhood was cool. We'd party and hang out with the homies and smoke and drink and all. We were youngsters. I was 14 years old. You know, it was it was dope. And then it started getting serious and got serious, you know. Things changed, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fools from the other side are coming down, like, oh, we got problems now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But my dad, he um he so I got busted and mom's was there. I got busted. I'm talking about the serious time when I got busted for the attempt to murder the three carjackings. Cause I was in and out at this point. 14 years old, I started going to placement, camp you know, all that juvenile halls. But the serious time when I went in, when I was looking at life the first time, I remember I went to LP and I was fighting, I was looking at life, you know. And I was in the basketball gym playing basketball. And I, you know, back there we were young, sure, we played with everybody. I didn't care about race. It's not like the joint. Mm -hmm. So we we're playing with the blacks, you know. And I remember this black dude, his name was Burbridge. He went up for a, for a layup. He was from Long Beach. And I hit him with my elbow. And uh, he started woofing. You know what I mean? I was like, shut up. Give me the ball. <laughs> and I took the ball and I started walking to go take it out. So I'm walking away. And I was only busted maybe about a month, not even a month. Mm -hmm. And I turned my back on him. And 
he's I could hear him talking. So I turned around to see what he was saying. As I'm turning, he's already swinging. So he cracks me right here. Mm. So I was like, oh, shoot. Like, backed up a little. I didn't fall. I didn't even knock out mm. or anything like that. But when he hit me, it broke my jaw. So my jaw broke right here and mm. it broke right here. So my jaw was hanging. And I back. I didn't know it was yet. Though. I knew he got me. I was stunned, backed up, and I started charging him. We started getting down right there. You know what I mean? So they pulled me apart. And my homeboy was sitting. It happened so fast, though. It happened so fast. They took me in front of me. The nurse, oh, have him sit right there. I go, I go, lady, I, my jaw broke. I was literally able to look like a puppet. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they said, oh, shoot. We got to. She started panicking. She's like, we got to get him to the hospital. They, they took me over to uh, General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And then they they, they didn't have the, uh, they couldn't touch me because I was a juvenile. So all they did was wire it together with like a piece of water, literally, just to hold it in place so they got my mom's signature. Mm. So I had to go back to uh, LP and, you know, all of a sudden, like, I'm in the cell, jaws throbbing, bro. Um, I look in the mirror. There's a mirror right there and my face is just like that. Mm. I look like the elephant man, bro. Dang. And um, they took me to go get surgery a couple, like two days later. I can't remember a day. I don't remember how many days my mom signed. Came out, I go, hey, do you want to have plates or do you want to have just the wires? I go, what's the difference? Well, if you have plates, you ain't going to have a glass jaw. If you do the wires, you're going to have a glass jaw. I go, put the plates there because I'm going to get a lot more fights. <laughs> I'm pretty fighting my turn. Yeah, yeah. So they put plates right here and they put plates right here. The reason why I brought that story up because afterwards I went and they held me in the infirmary mm -hmm. because I had a hill. I was on that uh, straw diet, whatever, yeah, the yeah. liquid diet, and I got all sucked up. But that wasn't the, that was, that wasn't the hardest thing. The hardest part was being a, a jail it felt like i was in jail within jail and i was alone i was alone with my thoughts and i re i remember i reached i think i was waiting for somebody to come visit me bro nobody came mm. i'm sitting there for like two months bro mm. and it was one of the darkest loneliest places in my life because i'm looking at life i ain't got no i don't even think moms was coming up at the time i don't i don't even, i don't even, from what i remember my visits were very <laughs> seldom you know what i mean and mm -hmm. pops was nowhere around i had a lot of the anger it, it kind of reflamed where is this dude at you know what i mean where, where, i'm looking at life I, I, i'm like i'm down like i don't know if i could go any lower mm -hmm. and he was nowhere around yeah you know so it just added more fuel to the flame yeah when you're right there in yourself and that devil's in your head and oh he's, bro he's starting to remind you of all this you know you're this way because of him because of her. And that's what I did. That's what I did. That's what I blame my mom. I blame my ex-girlfriend. Like, oh, she left me when I was on the run. She didn't. I blame my dad. I blame everybody, you know, for what I was where I was at. Yeah. Because that's what I was gonna say. Uh I was gonna make a point when um when I left West Covina, I went back to my mom's. I started noticing that I had a pattern. When somebody would hurt me or somebody would do me wrong, I inflicted stuff to myself. I would do stuff that would only hurt me. Because mm. thinking that I'm going to hurt them by hurting me. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, explain that to me. Okay. So when my dad did that to me, I was so mad. I said, all I wanted to do was go mess up my life. I wanted to go put in work. I wanted to be from the nation. I'm, I'm going to show him what bad could be. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, okay. I know what you mean. I'm going to, like self infliction. Mm -hmm. You know, some people hurt themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I did it in a different way. Yeah. Even like when I had girl problems, like my girl, I, I went and I started hanging around with the wrong homies. I, I started learning a pattern. That's what devil wants you to yeah. do. He wants you to be lost, so lost that you do self-infliction upon yourself. Mm -hmm. Whether it's cutting yourself or whether it's going out to do something stupid. Drugging yourself. Drugging yourself. Out there and putting yourself yeah. in chaos. Yeah. Because he wants you to feel sorry for yourself. Mm -hmm. He wants you to hate the world. It's, you know. Yeah, his goal is to get us to that place where we decide to kill ourselves. Where it's like, man, my life ain't worth nothing. Look at who I am. I got nothing. I'm about to do life. My mom ain't coming to visit. My dad ain't bothered to check up on me. I mean, all of that, like, all of them pressures of life, you know, and we have Satan right there amplifying it all to the highest. Mandatory. I When that happened and I went on my path to be the gangster I want to be, like in everything that I do, I go, I, excuse my language, I go balls to the wall. Mm -hmm. Like I don't hold Sugar back anything. It. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't, I do it to the fullest. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be, I wanted to go to prison. I wanted to go to white. I wanted to do it all. Because it gla it was glamorizing my neighborhood. Homies came home with tans and they came all swole tatted. I go, oh man, I want to go to jail. You know what I mean? Talk about the yard. <laughs> and then here I am in jail. I'm like, hey, this isn't like what they said. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but You're like, nah, it ain't all that no more, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is where they wanted me to go. Like, yeah. Nah, yeah, but that's crazy.
But you know what, Pete, man, I thank you for sharing, you know, giving us insight to all of that. You know, it, it explains a lot. You know what I mean? The course that you that you ended up taking. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, me personally, I want to say, man, I, I'm very blessed to have crossed paths with you when we did cross paths yeah. as young boys. We were, what, like 18, 19 years old at yeah. that time? Mm -hmm. 19, you know, 19. being in YTS and for you that don't know, you guys could, um, there's, if you Google online, gladiator school, youth training school, there's an article, um, on Pete, what's the exact thing? What, what, what does it say? Is it, yeah, what can they Google? What, what, you know what, the uh, youth training school, youth training school, gladiator school. Yeah. They, they even had it at that college while you went with me. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, just so you could hear a little bit more of, you know, where he's been and where he's at today. You could find that it's on my Google page it online. Too. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can find it on his page too. My Instagram page, Mr. Mr. Untouchable on Instagram. Yeah, Mr. Spelled out M I S T R underscore Untouchable. Yeah, you'll be able to find you know the different links to where he's been at a few different other podcasts. You could hear different details of his life. Yeah. But during that time, Pete, man, them early years in YTS, man. I mean, if you don't mind me just saying, you know, I mean, I was blessed to be with this with this brother during that time because. You know, that that article you're going to read about Gladiator School, there's a lot of other articles that you're going to read about that are crazy. I mean, they're like off the hook articles, yeah. like some crazy stuff that, you know, different perspectives while being there. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, we were there. We saw many people get stabbed. Many people get, you know, kind of butchered up with different weapons, yeah. battery pack, you know. Um, it was crazy. I mean, for reals, at that time in our lives, that was a gladiator school you yeah. know i shared i think i shared it on one of these or maybe not on this podcast but one that i spoke on that my first week in yts while on a and b waiting going through orientation yeah. still i saw somebody going up enf ramp huh. or was it gnh ramp I, no, I think it was enf ramp because i was going into a and b yeah and uh somebody was going up and this samoan dude man hawaii he was hawaiian samoan something some islander he put a like a two feet piece of rebar through another dude wow. through his chest no way and, and my heart was being fast like he was about to attack me <laughs> i don't want to go in there i was like <laughs> dang i was like trip out pete like wow when people hear gladiator school yeah. that's the type of stuff yeah that i saw within the couple yeah i mean you're you're in orientation what 30 days yeah so this had to be like two weeks probably like two weeks in mm. when i saw this and i'm like they, and I'm only in the orientation building thinking like, this is what happens when you go to the main line, you know, when you get back on the trade line. I was like, that's Dang. crazy. And at that time, I was a young Christian brother to top yeah. it off, you yeah. know. But yeah, man, that time right there. Yeah, that those was, dudes are big right there. They had the weights then. Yeah, they, they had the weights. They were up to 25. We were getting there 18, <laughs> 19 years old. And mm -hmm. we have 25-year-olds that have been there yeah. for seven years mm -hmm. with I mean, grubbing and, you know, they yeah, remember that YA diet. I mean, that YA bodybuilding yeah. thing was like eat a whole loaf of bread a day yeah. and, and, yeah. and lift it. There was some big Spreads. dudes there, man. Big yeah, when dudes. I got, you know, when I got to YA, the first, the, when I was in AB as well, yeah. they went on lockdown because the kid hung himself. Oh, yeah, that happened a lot. Yeah, kid hung, I, J. <laughs> when I, yeah, that's right. I think it happened. Well, some, when I got there, somebody, I got there, somebody died. When I left, they killed. So, yeah. died. so I, I entered YT and somebody died. I exited when somebody died. Yeah, yeah. Me, you know me I mean? too. I could say that. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen like a lot of crazy stuff, man. But even in the midst of that, I've shared this numerous times how, you know, in the midst of all that darkness and all mm. that chaos, the way God showed up in our lives yeah. and, and covered us for that time, for that purpose. Revival. revival you know revival. what I mean? It's hard for a lot of uh, Christian people out here that to understand that type of revival. Because I tell people... When I came home, Pete, and I heard uh, pastors announcing we're going to have revival this coming weekend yeah. or whatever, I used to be like, how can you just announce it? How can you? <laughs> like, how do you know the Holy Ghost is going to show up never... on that one? Because it was never announced for us. No, it just he happened. showed up and it just ha and it just didn't happen one day. It happened for a few. Years. I would say about three years, yeah, Pete. Definitely. I would say at least three years where that chapel was over packed we see people. and we've seen it from the beginning yeah we've seen it from the beginning under under pastor harold ja uh chaplain jackson, jackson when it was all dark and people used to go in there when it was just man people used to go in there to pass drugs it was just many brothers yeah we're the yeah, only mexicans all there. yeah only mexicans <laughs> yeah i remember i shared it before pete i know i don't want to take no credit for maybe i made it a little bit easier for you but when i first went i was the only mexican and they had told me the homies had told me if you go to that black church, and and I don't mean no racist statements, yeah. but the black church was the Protestant church, the yeah. brown church was Catholic. the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. 
That's the way it we was. Changed, we you changed that. God one. changed that with us. Yeah, God broke them barriers mm-hmm. through through homies. And you know what? Yeah, we were like some of the first, yeah. you know, Mexican gang members, you know, Christians that go through there that opened the door for for the whispers and the and yeah. the and the you know everyone All else that dudes. came through, man. Because we ended up having a a great chaplain, Chaplain Banks. Wow. You know, he perfect just timing. Yeah, perfect timing. Superintendent got changed. Remember? Yeah, everything, everything was, was just... changing. Everything was orchestrated. It was like it was like the book of Acts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where where we seen our church just triple in size. We couldn't even meet in the we had chapel to go to the field. We, we had, had to go to the football field. We had field. to go to the football field. We to had the to auditorium. auditorium. Yeah. We had guests that people that wanted to come in just to see what was God was doing. We had people from TBN coming in. Remember uh, Dwight Thompson gave yeah. us our drum set, yeah. our our uh, organ. Yeah, he the gave us a bunch robes. of stuff. Our robe, we got some uh gospel robes. They painted for our, our chapel. Remember, they painted, painted our chapel. Yeah, they remember. New pews. We sanded all the pews. Remember, yep. we took them outside, sand them. I got baptized right there in that chapel, yeah, man. I, I'm very blessed. I've got baptized there, and it, it, you know, we had some good times, man. And you know, it's crazy too because Pete, you remember me and you graduated the same the same time. Yep. Yeah. We graduated YTS, got our high school diplomas in there, man. I got but, my high school and my GED. Yeah, we were probably like 24, <laughs> probably yeah. like 23 or 24. I was 22. Right? 22? Yeah. I think I was probably 23. 23 years I got, old. I we got, got my high G- school diploma. Yeah, I got my diploma at 21. I got my GED because I went, no, I got my GED first, 21, and then I got my diploma at 22. Okay. I got, both, I got both of them there. Yeah, so yeah, that was some good accomplishments for us. It was awesome. It was some of the best years of my life. Yeah, to be honest mine's with too. You. Mine's too. Even though I was incarcerated, when I would get into my word, I got, I memorized so many scriptures then that to this day they're still in, in party within my heart. You know what I mean? I never yeah. forgot them. And um Albert Cool yeah. Repair Guy. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to, I didn't want to leave like my dad in that. I wanted to kind of finish just with run up with my dad real quick. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. How much time we got? Uh we're we no, no, we're, we're almost done. We're okay. yeah. We're, I just don't want to leave my dad out there like that. I yeah, yeah, bring no, 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 no. Yeah, for sure, bro. Let for me bring sure. him back yeah, in. Bring it in. Um, so my dad went through something recently where he uh he realized who was really there for him, and he came back around because I, I when I got when I got out of jail, my dad was one of the ones that came. My my he contacted my brother and told my brother, I want to pick Pete up. I want to go pick up, pick me up from uh where I was at. So I didn't want that to happen, you know? I didn't want that to happen, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know, we should do that. With the book. So my dad came in and he picked me up from when I was at uh, my last year when I paroled. My uh-huh. dad went with my brother and I didn't want that to happen. My brother kind of imposed that on me. He picked me up from jail when I got out. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't really want it, but it happened. And then I just kind of, you know what, all right, it's cool, whatever. I'm just going to keep it cordial with him, you know what I'm saying? Fast forward to um, recently when my dad started going through the stuff, he came around and I embraced him. You know, I embraced him yeah. and I told him, I says, you know, the only reason why I feel in my heart that I'm able to do this is because I got, I got the love of God in my heart. Because if I was trying to do this in my own free will, I wouldn't be able to do it. And uh, I wouldn't be able to embrace him the way that I did. It's crazy because I started giving my dad advice. You know, I started, you know, sharing the word with him, praying with him. I just trying to see them through a situation because he was going through a divorce. Yeah. You know, some there was some uh, marital problems there and he was hurt. He was really lost and hurt. And like he's older now. And, you know, it's not the same when you're young. When you're older, it's like man, you're, you're limited to what you can do now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just told him to stay strong and I let I would let him stay with me because he moved to Arizona. So he was out there in the middle of nowhere by himself because he retired yeah. out there. Yeah. So I embraced him and uh. And I kind of helped him get back to, you know, rest, you know, to, I, I just kept pushing him to God. I yeah. said, you know, God, here, here, this is what's going to help heal you. In Luke 4, 18, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. And uh, he, we got a chance to sit down because a comment was made to, I said something like, oh, like about when I was young and, and he got wind of it, what I said. And he goes, P, I think we need to talk. I go, all right, well, what do you want to talk about? Well, let's go, let's go eat. We want to go eat. And he kind of sh- told me his side of everything that happened. Mm. You know, because my mom always told us one side. Yeah, you said your mom made him seem like a monster. My mom just made him seem like the worst dude in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, she's barely, barely, like not too long ago, got over like that. You know what I mean? Because she's gotten closer to God too. So she realized she had to forgive him. And she did. But but, uh, he gave gave an account, his account. He gave me his side of how he wanted to be there. And my mom never let him. She would always 
hide from him or mm-hmm. take us away. And, um, you know, he, everything that he went through, I think I feel like God brought him to his knees and made him realize like, Hey, you know what? Like you're, you still have a chance to, to make amends. So maybe he wasn't there for me as much as when I was young, but he's there now when I need him because now I'm a man, you know, now I still need, like, I thank it because I can call him or I can call my mom and I can get, um, you know, I can get advice from them. You know, they give me solid advice. Like, you know, all the time God uses them. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because God still uses, I can ask all my friends, but when I ask my mom or my dad for their opinion, it's like, that's what I needed to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's because I forgave my dad. I always blamed my parents for what I'd done or p- other people. I think I was 30 years old or 31 years old when I finally says, I still had a choice. Even though the cards were stacked against me mm-hmm. growing up, even though I, the odds were against me, yeah. I still had a choice. And I and I chose wrong. Yeah. I got to take, I got to own up to what I did and forgive them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I did that, God leveled me up. Mm. He leveled me up because I let that animosity, the anger, you know, all that the spite towards him go. And I think my brothers still haven't, like some of them, they haven't done that. Yeah. And they still hold on to him. Like, I go, you know why you, I told my brother, you know why you can't do it? Because you're trying to do it out of your own strength, out of your own heart. Yeah. And the Bible says that uh, the heart above all things is wicked. wicked. You know what I mean? Deceiver. Yeah. I go, you got to do it. You got to do it from a, a supernatural God. For, what I look at is God forgave us of a lot of stuff, man. That we've, all the dirt I did, I know what yeah. I've been forgiven of. Mm. And if you, he can forgive us, then I should be able to forgive him. That's awesome, Pete. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. Full circle. And you give him, you give him opportunity to be a grandfather to your kid now, huh? Yeah, your he, son. he sees my my son and he he holds him. He's like, ah, it reminds me of of me you know i see it i see the love like he loves to hold him he loves he sees him smile and it just i know it brings him joy you know what i mean to to his heart to see even my mom like you know what i mean but now we're in a better place man my mom she just bought a house not too far from me you know my dad he, he he's doing good he got his pad like everything's full circle bro all my brothers are doing good you know all that 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 negative we went through man like you know we can look back at it now and says like, yeah. that was just the journey I, I wouldn't change it bro yeah. that's who made me who i am today yeah. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. made, made me to get where I am today. Yep. It's, you know what I mean? It's cool. Hey, Pete, if you don't mind, right before we leave, do you mind if I open it up for some phone calls? Just yeah. case somebody yeah, go ahead and put the number up. We're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines if you can. We'll just continue our conversation. Okay. You know, I just want to say, you know, this brother right here, man, I, I love this brother, man. You know, um, he knows, man, you know, it's just... I'm just grateful, Pete. I'm grateful, man, for, you know, our history. Like I said, 30 years, bro. 30 you know. years, you know, we've been, you know, we've been grinding in different ways, you know. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you're you're being a father today. You're working, you know, taking care of your businesses. And, um, you know, it's, it's and it's just awesome, bro. It's awesome to see where you're at today, considering, you know, we lost a lot of good homies, you know, on both sides. And it's like. You know, sometimes I ask God, why me? I you know, know what I'm saying? Why, why, you know, why me sometimes? You know, I haven't made it, you know, for sure. I ain't made it yet. Yeah. You know, every day I'm grinding, I'm sweating, I'm, you know, I'm putting into the work to get where I need to get to. But I look at it and be like, you know, oh, you know, my situation, you know, I was doing life, you know, and God gave me an opportunity to come home and father three more kids, you know, get into my son's life, you know, the most important parts of his life as a teenager. and. Um, just grateful, man. Just grateful that God, um, would give us this opportunity, you know, and just like you, man, I was able to make amends with my dad before he passed. My dad passed, you know, and I was, you know, I had a lot of, um, animosity towards him and everything, but by the grace of God, man, I was able to, um, you know, (laughs) able to make them amends and stuff. So just real quick, maybe somebody ain't looking at the chats. We opened up the phone lines. If you want to call in, the phone number is 626-367-9275. That's uh, 626-367-9275. And, uh, hey, Pete, I I, I trip out, though, because, you know, as everybody's already heard, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, you know, he's a prosperous. uh, Donna Herrera. Oh, hold on real quick. I think that's Donna. Let me get this real quick. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? 
I'm going live. I'm going to go live. Hello, can somebody yeah, can hear me? You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but do me a favor. Lower the volume on the TV, please. Hello? Yeah, lower the volume so we could hear you. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we could hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now, brother. All right. Who, know, who are we talking to? You guys to? know who this is? Who's this? You, you two heathens know who this is? Man, who's this? <laughs> That's Miguel. Okay. That's Miguel. Sounds like Miguel, huh? Miguel. Sounds yeah. like Miguel. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's going on? You, you know I had to chime in. All That's right. What's up. Yeah. How yeah, you doing? Good to see you guys, man. Uh, uh, Justino's on the line too right now, and so was uh, little David. They're all on the but, line uh, with you right now. Yeah, they were on the no, not here, but they're they're watching. They're oh, watching okay. on uh, Instagram. Nice. Yeah, you guys, you guys brought a, a lot of memories back, man. <laughs> I hope you know? good memories. You should tell oh. me how it is. <laughs> so this caller right now, this is another brother from YTS. He Life was doing or... life, man. Yeah. He ended up doing almost, uh, man. I want to say almost thirty years. Um, but yeah, that's who we yeah. got on the line. So go ahead, Miguel. Go ahead, and talk, bro. No, man. I mean, it's uh, I mean, to look at uh, uh Jaime's life. You know, and to see where he came out of and what he's doing today, you know, it's uh, it's humbling. Not only that, but to see what uh, what God ended up doing back in those days. Mm. You know, when when the, those places were called gladiator schools, when it was kicking off, when you know knives were being passed from yeah. building to build, people getting stabbed, sliced. You know, that we were here. We are thirty years later that we survived that. Yeah, Amen. and that we're here today. You know, that we're here today, and we're able to share about that. And how we overcame it, That's you know. Right. If, if it wasn't for God, none of us would be here. That's right, Amen. You know, and and and, and to see where where lazy has come from, you know, to see where he's at today, you know. Every time when I go with them, I say, "Hey, bro, I feel like I'm with a celebrity now." <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We always got to book them in advance, huh? Hey, <laughs> all the time. I said for the brother yeah. Audi, we got we got to remember him and, and a couple of other ones that are always uh busy, huh? Yeah, you know, and, and praise God. And also, you know, for the for the ones that didn't make it, mm, you know, yeah. I have a picture, you know, Thumper and uh, and uh, Mario, the ones Lorenzo. that ended up. Yeah, Lorenzo. Mm. I have a picture. I have a, a and, and I've been wanting to send it to you guys, all the pictures that I have. But uh, they're, they're good memories, man. But it, it's even more of a blessing to see what you guys are doing today. Hey, it's you know, it's and, crazy. Like, it just gives me chills because, like, we were all there on the yard. We were all there in YTS together. We're all doing time together. You guys, you guys didn't have no date. No date. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> right. and, and, and look what the Lord has done. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, guys are both lifers, and that's something to be happy about. Like, that's just God showing, like, look, I'm gonna let you guys enjoy, you know, the latter parts of your life, the better parts. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. We, we I feel like we needed to be incarcerated because he kept us. He preserved you know, us. He preserved he us. He saved us. <laughs> he took us off those streets, bro. Yeah, he preserved from drugs. us. Yeah. From from drugs, from yeah. gangbanging, he took us off those streets, put put us away for all that time to preserve us for the for the latter years. You know yeah, what I'm saying? that's right. And that's where we are. And you know, yeah. God, God, he just continues to amaze me. He never stop, he never ceases to amaze me. That's you right. Know what I mean, everything that I've accomplished is nothing yeah. compared to what God has done. You know, and and that's what's amazing. What you guys are saying is is here we are. You know, decades later. You know, where we went through to the trenches, some of us, you know, we were scattered throughout the prison system. Mm -hmm. Some of us ended up in the shoes and the holes, you know, some of us, you know, sometimes we, we, were, we were guilty of those things. But yeah. at other times we weren't. And just it was because of our walk, yeah. you know, and, and and we stood. But, you know, I always tell people God stood for us, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, I always say well, even when we were unfaithful, he continues to be faithful because that's who he is. Yeah, that's you right. know, and, and it. And it just gives me chills when I see you guys, you know, to see like, man, you know, that's the power of God right there. That's right. That's right. You know, because I know what I know where you where you guys came from. Yeah. I know your guys' background, you know, and, and I know where you're at today. That's good, bro. And, and that's what that's what's humbling. I just want to call you and say, you guys, thank you, man. Thank you guys for putting this together and for you guys uh, sharing that. Oh, man. Thank you, Miguel. We appreciate it, man. You know, we always had that special brotherly love with each other, man. We always had that bond. Like a David, Jonathan Bond, and I, I love you, man. And I'm glad that you're home. I'm glad you guys are, you guys are all home. And you know, all the lifers that have gotten out from, you know, it's, it's just, it's, a, it's awesome to see you guys out here and functioning and having your own families now. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I seen the message too. We'll be at your birthday party next year. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tell you why we appreciate the year in advance uh, notice. <laughs> yeah, that's the wife right there, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, yeah. my brother. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk right. to you soon, Miguel. Man, we love you, bro. Most and uh, yeah, keep up the good work as well, bro. And I don't know yeah, if you know, definitely. but they were starting their own uh, drug treatment facility. Him and his wife. Wow. Right, Miguel. It's, it's still in the process. Yeah, we're still in the process. I'm a program director right now at uh, PH Wellness, and my uh, we already got our license and everything. We're just now. It's just. Uh, I mean, it's the beginning works, but uh, it's, it's you know, God is in the forefront of it. Amen. That's right. right. We see Farias yeah. checking in as well. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, another, <laughs> another, another one. <laughs> another life for checking in. That's cool, man. Appreciate the you love, got, you man. Got a, you, you probably have a, about over 500 years of experience, bro, that's just uh, right. timed in right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Right? For reals, bro. A whole bunch of time. Yeah. All right, that's brother. Right. All right, Miguel. Hey, we'll care. talk to you soon, brother. Yeah. I love you guys. I love man. you too, man. Hey, is it cool if I give them the number to call in if they want yeah, my followers? Yeah, tell them to call in. I'm right here with my brother Jojo. We're doing a live podcast right now. He started taking some phone calls. I put a phone number on there, but in case you guys it, didn't catch it. Yeah, it's 626-367-9275. You want to type it in? Yeah, let me type it in. All right. 626-9275. No, no, no. 367-9275. 367-9275-9275. Yeah, 367-9275. There's a way you can pin it, too. I don't know how to do that. Oh, there it is. Oh, there, <laughs> there it is. is. We got the young IT I, guys up in here. I know. We need that. Yeah. If you guys want to call in right now? We're doing it live. Uh, we're just basically, I, I should have did this from the beginning. I don't know what I was thinking. But <laughs> basically, just giving my story, my testimony. Uh, we're taking phone calls. That number that I pinned. If you want to if you want to chime in, you want to come in, then go ahead and feel free to call that number right now. We're just taking calls. We're talking about my life, talking about everything I've been through in the institutions. Unknown caller. There's one right there. From Norwalk. Uh oh. Hello. You on the air? Can, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, they hung up. They got gunshot. Go ahead and call back. You want to call back? Somebody got scared. Jojo right here. He got his own podcast. I was actually incarcerated. We, I was in YA with him. He was a lifer. He's a lifer. Grew up in the city of La Puente. We we hooked up in there like as as homies, brothers in the Lord. And, you know, God used us in a mighty way in there. All these years, decades later, we're out of here. He's still years. putting. He's still putting in work. He's still doing the God with the Lord's work. He asked me to be his uh, special guest, so that's what I'm in. Just kind of filling you guys in on what's going on right here. He asked me to be in his show, and of course, I'm gonna come support. So if you guys have any questions, you guys want to ask, feel free to call that number down there at the bottom. I pinned it. Um, uh, basically we're just taking some phone calls right now. We took a couple already. The dude that just called right now, he was another dude that we were incarcerated with that God got, that God, uh, got out of prison. He was a lifer too. He did like, what, what did he do? He did, he did like 26 years. 26. Yeah. What'd you do? Huh? How many did you do? I did almost 14. 14. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah. it's just, it's miracles in the making. You know what I mean? Tell, don't forget to go like and subscribe on YouTube. Trap yeah. families. Trap families. I'm going to tag it. I'm going to put a post up later. You guys can share, uh, click on the link. Yeah. So. So, man, I just, you know, like I said, I'm just excited, man, to have this brother here because, you know, like I said, you know, he you, you heard his story, man. I mean, he was homeless. He, you know, him and his family had struggled. And today, you know, he, he's in a good place. You know, yeah. he's in a good place where he's blessed. And let me tell you something, man. I, I, I know this brother's heart, man. There's and I'm not saying this for you to hit him up for money or nothing, but mm -hmm. this brother got a good heart, man. He's a giving person. And I believe, you know, through his giving, God's just multiplied oh, in, in, in return you know what oh, i mean because i know i already know pete you you know you got that heart where you look out for people man you know what i'm saying and the way that person looked out for you in the beginning i know you look out for people as well and and that's a blessing man and yeah there's a lot of secrets in in the in, in the word that god gives us he gives it's not even secrets but there's a lot of things that will help you to figure things out in life and one of them is the power of giving mm -hmm. you know it said the bible says it's better to give than to receive yeah you know and i learned that uh through i tried it i test the bible says he, it's the only time he tells you to test them mm -hmm. is in your finances you know what i mean yeah so i i do that you know i like to do that like all right God, you want me you can't outgive god yeah you can't you can't outgive god yep. you know what i mean so that's one of the people ask me like why are you, how are you so blessed I, i'm just a giver you know I, I give my finance give my time give whatever i can help you with if i can help somebody to better their situation that's what i'm gonna do 
You know what I mean? And and I one of my things that I see what God has called me to do is, you know, I may might not be behind the pulpit, but it's it's in the trenches, mm -hmm. it's in the streets, it's with my homies because I made it out. I try to help these youngsters or other homies that I see that are still, you know, they're trying to find their way out, but it's hard because they don't have too many good role models. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So what I try to do is I try to come along and show them like, look, man, like I made it out. I'm a three striker, man. You know what? I I, I was raised in the institution, but look at me now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and this is this is how far I've come, and I'm not done yet. Yeah. I'm still putting in work. That's I'm right. still doing, but something on the positive tip now. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, that's what's up right there. Right? Heck yeah, still doing it. That's what he's talking about, man. Every day he's grinding. Yeah. And yeah, and he just opened up his own shop. So, yeah. I mean, if, I mean, some of you's probably got tatted in that garage, you know, yeah. that untouchable garage, but now yeah. he got his own shop. It's looking nice Thanks, too, man, man for real. I mean, it's looking nice. You know, I wanted to do it for my customers. It's for me, of course, I got to work in that environment. But also, like when you know you you come into a store, you come into a shop, you want to look clean, you want to look fresh, you want to. Hey, I got tan at that spot. That's what I'm trying to create that environment right there for my customers because I appreciate them. At the end of the day, that's they who they're the ones who pay the bills. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like you know, I want it to look to look nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's just part of my character of who I am of you know do giving back. That's one way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and and that's not all. Like I I still want to. I have a I have a the major my major goal my major vision is to get a warehouse. Mm. that's my major that's what i wanted before the shop yeah but i got the shop for now and i know that in the future god is going to bless me with a warehouse and that warehouse is where i'm going to have multiple maybe you can have your podcast there. <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah y'all blowing yeah. up at that time you know what i mean yeah we'll check through. it out heck Come yeah through. well you know we'll still be in touch man yeah for sure Shoot, you know by god's grace we're going to be around for a while but anyways man i think everybody else is gun shy on the calls man so uh, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to, you know, thank all of you for the support, man. Thank you once again, yeah, no Pete, problem, for buddy. being here. Um, I would invite you guys to my website, which is www.trappedfamilies.com. On there, I do have some services on there, which I provide. There is a free link there, which is called your discovery call. It, you know, I'm a life coach. What I do is I coach families of them that are incarcerated, them that are in their addictions. Sometimes these family members, you know, they can't do it on their own. And and what I've always shared in the beginning of, you know, this mission is that, you know, that that that's like a secret society where families don't brag about their kids being locked up and on dope and, you know, drugged out and, you know, looking bad. And and so I provide a safe haven for them to talk. To, that's what's up. You know, what I mean, they call me and be like, listen, my I just had a, a mother call and just, you know, get at me about her son. He's a teenager. They're trying him as an adult. She don't know if he should should, should get him an attorney. And mm. she's like, man, you know, I don't know what to do and stuff. And she's just going, she's just all over the place. He's busted. I was able to just, uh, yeah, he's busted. So I was able to, you know, talk to her and just bring her down mm. and tell her, you know, just hold up, hold up on all that right now. Just, yeah. you know, let's see where it's going, you know. But sometimes they just need to talk. You know what I mean? They just need to talk and. Thank God that he's put me in a position where I'm able to, you know, be a resource to these families and stuff. And uh, being a drug and alcohol counselor for, you know, almost 18 years, you know, I have I have some connections, you know, to get people yeah. in recovery. So, you know, it's you know, it's just a blessing to be able to be there for families. You know, it, it sucks, you know, being there, yeah. you know, as they go through all that craziness. But because of what I've been through and the connections I have, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for them. So go there and check out my website, www.trapfamilies.com. And there's some different ways. Um, I do do motivational speaking as well on that website. You could, you know, get a hold of me through there and get me into the school. I go into schools. I go into junior high, high schools. I go into a lot of rehab programs. I go into a lot of churches. I do a lot of um, uh, men's discipleship classes. I do a lot of different things. So. Go on there, get a hold of me, and we'll figure out some way of um making it happen. All right, look at little <laughs> Mister Touch Ball. Look at oh, all right. He'll click on right now though. He'll click just on. Right. Look, at, look, at, he, look at him. He's just looking at the camera like, all right, I see him. He's just chilling. Yeah, my handsome, my little handsome. That's the little blessing right there. That's yeah. that's the little baby little blessing right there. Right here. So before we do leave, you know, actually, what's it like being a dad now, man? You know, because from from him and your your 
my daughter youngest daughter yeah. is what's what's the age gap oh man 12 years 13, like 13, 13 years. years yeah bro it's you know what <laughs> like some people say like oh like you know i had my kids i'm done raising kids whatever i i'm it's different bro because we're old i'm older now like i'm more mature now i feel like like you embrace everything more you know what i mean like you yeah. appreciate every, being a being a parent now yeah. when we were young we didn't we didn't really um like we didn't really like you know grasp it we didn't understand like i did and i was still you know living my own trying to live my own life and trying to be a father on the weekends because i wasn't with their moms you know what i mean yeah so having him now is like getting that opportunity to do it all over again yeah. and even become a better father to my daughters now mm -hmm. that, that you know like god is just teaching me you know what i mean you know he needs you like i see i see him and i see myself as a baby you know what i'm yeah. saying and it's like dude i'm gonna I'm a be in this kid's life he ain't going nowhere without me you know what i'm saying like decisions you know you have that fear you know what i mean of, of you don't want your kid to make be around the wrong people or whatever yeah but i love it i'm embracing it you know what i mean and i, I want to i'm already th thinking like oh yeah we're gonna have them dieting we have milk pair you'll be working you'll be in the gym <laughs> i go i go see that's the dodgers you go play with the dodgers right there. <laughs> you know that's I mean? cool bro that is so cool. i can't wait till he plays literally i can't wait like i've always dreamed that like it even it just it blows my mind away to think that i'm finally gonna be able to do that with my son yeah you know god willing you know yeah. what i mean like because I, I always had daughters and it's cool i love my daughters to death but this is it's different with the yeah, boy. different with the boy Way different. You, know, you got sons yeah yeah so. i've been blessed i got two daughters and two sons <laughs> oh he's straight. he's straight yeah yeah so my oldest my oldest is a boy and my youngest is a boy i got two girls right in the middle mm -hmm. so yeah i'm blessed bro i'm blessed just like you blessed yeah so anyways we're gonna go ahead and uh we're about to tap out p but one one last thing i like yeah. to do bro is if you don't mind looking yeah. into this camera yeah and just sharing just you know share something with that Recap. that that younger person man that younger person that you know may not have the father in there oh uh, that person's calling back again hold on hold on one second before you make that stop the press yeah stop the press <laughs> hello. hello 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 hi hi who are we talking to hi this is michaela Hi, Michaela. Michaela from Norwalk. Oh. Um, yeah, I called earlier, but I think it was a call drop. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, up, yeah, Mickey? so, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. I'm, I'm so glad that you're out here, you know, saying your story, you know what I mean? Because there's so many platforms that sometimes become mute, but this is, this is good, and you know that. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen my, I don't know if you've seen my, my comment yeah. that I left there, you know, um, I don't know if you mind, mind me how, you know, when we first met, it, we were broken, yeah. he was broken as a good friend and, mm -hmm. and I've seen him through the years and you know what, he's just amazes me, you know, how single dad, it was able now, you know, conquer everything you know through the trials and and i just you know he's like like i told him a while back you know i sent him a message about generals and discipling and and that's what god does he uses us to disciple us broken he uses the broken Amen. and that's and that's how it's been and and that's and unfortunately and fortunately to fortunate it's going to be like that but it's always going to be you know a light at the end you know what i mean there's there's always going to be hope there's always god's always there with us That's always right, and i'm just proud of you thank you i'm proud of what you came and and overcome and now you got your baby boy and, yeah yeah and it it's over. like it awesome ain't <laughs> it, it ain't over mm. nope it's never going to be over right. because what you're doing is you're planting that seed Amen. you're planting that seed that god gave us to your seeds and it keeps going and going and going and, and as long as God's in the mist, everything else is is just easy peasy. You know that. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Appreciate you. I'm always watching. Proud of you. I appreciate you, Nikki. You know, and I, you're, I hope, you're I hope, welcome. I hope also that you're you're like you know, in a, I know you're you seem like you're in a better place these days. You know, God is also ministering to you, so I pray that that will just continue in your life. You know what I mean? So, Amen. Of course, you. yes. I You're welcome. It, you know, and I just know that, yeah, I, I just know that you always have somebody praying for you, for all of you, for everybody. Thank you. You know, and those prayers go a long prayers. way. I need them prayers. <laughs> <laughs> we all need them prayers, right? <laughs> yes, prayers. 
And you know, one more thing too before it before I hang up and go. Yeah. But I've always I've always said when you know that you know I went to VO. You yeah. know what I mean? They instilled a lot of you know a lot of knowledge in me and and the learn and learn the way of God and and pretty much instill yourself in that Bible. You know. Yeah. But always remember that everybody always remember that when you pray and you pray, are you ready to have the listening ear? of when your prayers are being answered because sometimes we turn away from that, from that, what we're praying for. So just be ready to have that listening ear when God's delivering your, your, your prayers, Amen. what you're asking for. I hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. All right. All right you bless. guys keep doing what you're doing. God bless you guys and have a good, good evening. You too. God Likewise. bless you. Thank God you for calling you. in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So that's who it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, Pete, if you don't mind, just, yeah. you know, speaking to that camera, talk to that youngster, yeah, talk yeah. to that person that, you know, maybe doubting themselves in their dreams, you know what I mean? That maybe lacking mm. some hope, you know what I mean? Because mm. your story gives a lot of hope, bro. Yeah. I mean, most definitely a lot of hope. Yeah, I'm actually getting ready to go uh, back into the prisons. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, talked to a brother today. I've been talking to people, mm -hmm. getting myself ready to prepare to go back into the system and share my story with a lot of inmates in there because, you know, who who better to go back to who? Who needs it more than the guys that are in there right now that, you know, that have a date, you know? Um, so I'm actually setting, preparing to do that. So keep me in your prayers about that because going behind the walls. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. You want to tell the youngsters too. He just thanks God for being nice. So anyways, um, I just want to say that I want to, I want to say, I want to speak to two. I want to speak to uh, the youngsters and I want to also speak to the parents first to the kids. If you are in that type of situation that I was in where you're only being raised by one parent and your dad ain't around or your mom ain't around or whoever ain't around, just know that this is, that God will be your father. You know, God, God is going to be your father. He's going to be the one that's good. And he's going to give your mom or he's going to give that single parent the strength that they need to raise you. But you need to do your part. You need to stay focused. You need to stay in school. You need, don't go the same route that we did because it was an ugly route. And I just thank God that I that we made it out, that we're here to tell about that story because we shouldn't be, to be honest with you. You know, he should still be doing life. I should have, I escaped that. I should be doing life twice already, you know, but thank God that I'm here. So if you're going through that <clears throat> situation where you have animosity or anger or you're doing self-infliction on, on your own self because somebody else did you wrong, don't do that. Don't make that same mistake that I made because the only person that you're hurting is yourself. For whatever the reason, I knew I was hurting myself because <clears throat> I had a girlfriend that I felt, oh, I'm going to get even with her by going and ruining my life. You know, the only one that was doing time was me. She was out there partying still. She was still out there doing her thing while I was incarcerated. But I says, you know what, I'm going to go mess my life up because I'm going to show her that I don't give no Fs. And that's what happened. I ended up being in prison for seven years while her life went on. And I don't want to blame nothing towards her. I'm just saying as I made the mistake of taking it out of myself. Now I want to speak to the parents. If you're a parent and you have kids that are out there, your child needs you. Your son, your daughter, whoever they're, they need you. They need you to be there. They need you to get yourself straight first. They need you to get yourself right because if you ain't living right, you ain't doing making right decisions, then you're just gonna be a bad influence on them. So get yourself right, get yourself cleaned up, do whatever you gotta do. If you're dr on drugs, open yourself up, get yourself right, get yourself around some good people. Because God also, he can restore that. He restored it with my dad. Me and my dad, even though he wasn't around when I was growing, he's there now when I need him. So it's never too late to correct that of, of not being there for your child. Do whatever it takes, whatever it costs, whatever you got to do to make things right with your son or your daughter, you know, do it because <clears throat> I need my dad now more than I ever did. I need my mom now more than I ever did. You know what I mean? Forgive them for that foolish. Forgive them for what they did. When they were young too. You young now, you make a lot of mistakes. Well, they were, they were young when they had you. You know what I'm saying? So everybody needs that second chance. Don't use that as an excuse to go mess your life up. Because that's what I did. I used the excuse of, my, of being poor, of my dad leaving us. I used that as an excuse to go and be a knucklehead. And it just, it just ended me up in prison. You know what I mean? But thank God that all those tests is now a testimony. You know what I mean? That everything that I went through, that I could sit here now and look back and say, man, God, like, I just thank God that this whole time you had a plan. You know what I'm saying? And he was able to pull me out of that dark place, of that, that dark 
dark place that I was in, a, a prisons, a juvenile hall, and he's able to use me. Even if I just touch one person out there, even if just one person hears my story and makes some type of change or really goes deep, then that's that's all that's good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? But if we can reach multiple people, and that's what this platform is for. This trap families is for hurt people. It's hurt for families, integrated families, whatever it is your situation is, and God is going to use my brother right here. Tap in within. I'm going to share the link with you guys. Tap in. You know what I'm saying? And utilize this because we're all hurting. You know what it is? We Mexicans think that we don't need counseling. Mm. We Mexicans think that we don't need help. But we'll figure it out on ourselves. Boo. Boo. We need help. We need advice. We need to tap in. We need to try to find out what's wrong. Why are we the way that we are? Why do we make these type of decisions? Why? Because a lot of it has to do with your childhood. Because of the way you were raised or what you were taught. Or how you were taught. So sometimes God has to undo the bad. He has to undo a lot of the stuff that happened when you were young and recreate. What about the Bible say? Romans uh, chapter 12 too? Mm -hmm. By the renewing mm -hmm. of your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to reconstruct everything from the foundation up. So sometimes we need help. And that's what Brother Jojo's here for. That's what I'm here for is tapping with me, tapping with him. Don't be too proud because you know what? That's what we're here for. That's what God has appointed us. That's what God gave us his platform is to be able to utilize it to give back, to help people that are struggling, help people that are still hurting. You know what I mean? So I just want to start, uh, share that. Thank you, Jojo. I appreciate the you know, the opportunity to be able to come on your podcast. This guy, man, is a really good brother. I, I, I look up to him as a big brother because, man, he's still, he's going strong. He threw the brakes out the window a long time ago and God is still using it and blessing his life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You inspired me, Jojo, man. I love you, man. Love you too, you know bro. I mean? Love Thank you too, you. man. So there it is, man, that that testimony, man, right there, that story, you know, like I said, it's filled with hope, man. It's filled <laughs> with hope, purpose. I mean, he's fulfilling his destiny right now. So um, be sure to share the video, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, be sure to share it. Um, get it, get it around, man, because, you know, this brother has a lot of inspiration, you know, especially for the younger generation and even for the older homies that don't, you know, that think that they're just hope to die dope things and losers and whatnot. Yeah. You know, this story of somebody, I mean, a real life story, somebody that went through it, man. I mean, hands on experience. It ain't just somebody that, you know, I mean, uh, did did one wrong thing, you know, in his teenage years and got in trouble and lived a perfect life after that. No, it's been a process. So he understands that it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to, you know, drop them chains and, and be free. So, um, you know, be sure to share it, man. Be sure to like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, Trap Families. And um, real quick, uh, before we leave, we're about to leave right now, man, about to tap out. But a lot of you have been asking if you could give a generous donation. You guys want to, like, bless the platform. I have a link for you. We're going to go ahead and put it up on there real quick as we get ready to go. But thank you. Remember, we'll be back next Sunday. Got another interesting story for you guys, man. So be sure to, you know, check back in. That's the link right there. Go ahead and scan that right now with your phones and uh, go ahead and drop something. If God puts it upon your heart, you know, if not now, later. But anyways, God bless. We'll see you soon. How long did we go?